All right, it's time. I hope you enjoyed my fun fact. If you haven't read it yet, we are soon to be 222 weeks away from 222 on the second day of the week, if you count from Monday. Uh, I thought it was funny. We probably won't be able to release Kid Life 22 by then unless we're very aggressive in a major release. And this is actually a typo. It should be no more than three minor releases because you have a major and a minor minor, and you can have at most four releases, including, well, long story short, uh, would be great, but let's see. Let's see when we're there. Yeah, yeah, we could <laughs> do lots of minor releases of 22 and release 22 to 22, but getting to the 22 major is very hard. Anyway, uh, product update of today. So uh, last few updates, what I did is I went through the releases. Uh, I usually I shared something else uh, with it. And I saw that a lot of people are actually covering what we are shipping in releases. Plus that tomorrow we have a kickoff where we announce what we're going to release in 10.3. Last time I already gave you an update on what we're releasing in 10.2. So I figured I talk a little bit about what's on my mind. Um, and what is on my mind? So there's two big things on my mind, uh, and it's the Enterprise Edition Premium and Ultimate. So I, I wanted I want to discuss those two today. So let's let's start with Ultimate. Ultimate is a, I think one of the most exciting things to me that is coming. Uh, it, it's a very important thing for GitLab releasing a new tier. It means that all of us have to start thinking about how. In terms of product, how can we create additional value? In terms of sales, we have to now have another product to sell. So how do we bring it to customers and how do we balance that with the other things we already sell? Um, and even in terms of engineering, because there's a lot to think about because now we have yet another point of complexity in a product, right? Now we can have a feature can be in CE, ES, EP, and ultimate and or ultimate. So. That all is quite complex. And the fact that we're doing this on a short term is very exciting, but a lot comes looking with it. So I figured I would go over some things uh, to start your minds and to also help you think of questions that then we can discuss at the end. And then hopefully we'll discover things that I haven't thought about and that we solve before we actually ship uh, Ultimate. So uh, to get into it. So the idea behind Ultimate is, is that it's the ultimate version of GitLab. So everything we will release should be an ultimate with the idea that eventually it will be worth and people will be more than happy to pay a thousand dollar per user per year or 999. Um, and I, I believe we can get there and I, I think we have a good vision to get there but there's a lot to be the first steps we're going to take is that today if you have GitLab it replaces your SEM tool of course it replaces also your CI tools and your CD tools uh, and that's worth a lot in itself. And it's definitely worth the price tag that people pay for premium. But if you want to get to the price tag of Ultimate, we want to offer additional things. Uh, and we're starting off with portfolio management tools and security tools, but we want to add more things in the future. Uh, and that's one of the things that I would like your help with, with thinking about what. And the way I think about it today is that a typical setup you see is something like you have Jenkins in an organization and have some sort of Git um source control management system sometimes it's just gitlab but sometimes it's something else then they use the jenkins for ci and artifactory for their artifacts and then like sonar cube something like sonar cube to do for instance static analysis testing and then usually a whole bunch of more tools and i want ultimate to be replacing all of these tools so you know that today we can already replace the jira part for the most part if not almost all um, that should be all. We do the full Git thing. We do the full CI thing. We can easily replace Jenkins. Um, and we're getting close to Artifactory, but not close enough. And the Sonar Cube, the security part, we're not doing yet. And that is what uh, Ultimate is supposed to be. It's supposed to be that one tool that replaces all the other tools. And having a single tool has all the benefits that, of course, you're aware of. So what is the actual plan? The actual plan is that we're going to release release i say and i don't say launch we're going to release ultimate with 10.2 so that's on november 22nd uh, that's very soon you might be thinking and that's why i'm talking about this uh, and initially it will be available for a, a limited time for the same price as enterprise edition premium and the thinking here is that uh, it will only have one feature right so if you're buying ultimate 
the only addition you get is epics and epics is a very nice feature and one that people are really waiting for uh, but it's obviously not worth a huge price jump right we are aware of that and our customers are definitely not uh dumb so they're aware of that as well but the idea is is that if you lock in the price now then you get of course all the upgrades and all the additional features that we're building over the coming year um and those features will of course be portfolio management features security scan web ide um and and many other features and there's a link here where you can see what is the current roadmap in high high level and what are the specific issues and there's a number listed there um, but we're looking to add more of course over time uh, let's move forward all right so that's e ultimate that's the quick summary of ultimate and i hope it spawns some questions you have uh, you, you can drop them in the chat already if you have them now um but it's important to realize that introducing a new tier doesn't mean that we shouldn't look at the other tiers right uh we have right now enterprise station starter and premium out those are the two things our customers can buy um and enterprise edition starter is incredibly cheap it's ridiculously cheap it's cheap for a, a git solution let alone for a git solution with the number one leading ci product so uh, it's a very very good offering and therefore it's important that we add additional value in enterprise edition premium so let's go to that premium also this is like the coolest gift ever from adventure time great show should definitely watch it so premium it's right now it's our most uh, important product but it's also our best product right because if you buy gitlab today if you buy premium today pre 10.2 you get all the features that gitlab has um and premium has is a large part of our revenue a very significant part and in particular it has a, a major impact on our average selling price in other words if we sell more of eep the average selling price of gitlab goes up and if this every selling price goes up that's very good for revenue and of course we want to grow the company um so the real challenge here is not so much selling eep in itself because it's a very good product the challenge is selling eep in compared to enterprise edition starter and when i say selling what I really mean from my perspective is creating the value in the product. So making sure that EP is actually five times worth more in terms of product features uh, than uh, Enterprise Edition Starter. And of course, we're always competing with CE. That's the biggest competitor, which is free, which is great and it's important. So how are we doing that? Um, I, 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 I'm of the opinion and I believe that the current price for premium is a fair one. I think the value is there. So one, you get much more control. So you have things like audit logs, audit user, group sync filters, commit restrictions, and we're adding a whole bunch more in uh, 10.2. And on top of that, you get all these scaling features that are very, very good. It's even better integrated with Jira. And what I should address and one of the reasons why I want to discuss this is that we are going to finally ship GO in GA, meaning generally available, meaning anyone can actually use GO in 10.2, which is what we're currently aiming at. But I, I like to be a little bit restrictive here because of our history. So 10.2, 10.3, GO will be available for everyone. So it means that we create this massive additional. Uh, value with Enterprise Edition Premium because it allows you to replicate your uh, GitLab instance across geographies. And in the beginning of next year and following that, we'll continue to invest in Enterprise, Enterprise Edition Premium. Um, yeah, do you have another slide on this? Yes, I did. So, given that we're shipping Ultimate, how are we going to handle Premium? Well, one thing that we're doing is we're prioritizing features and things that are interesting for the typical customer of premium so we're thinking very much what are the things that we should add to gitlab and then we try to prioritize the ones that are more likely to end up in enterprise edition premium so that we still continue to add value to premium over time so even though we're introducing ultimate we'll continue to invest in premium and continue to add features there that i think are in line with the features that we've released so far if we're doing something completely new like the web ide and like security that will end up in ultimate, but otherwise it will most likely end up in premium 
given the restrictions that we have and the restrictions that we have, I'll get back to later, but it's the same as always, right? We can't always release something in C because of technical, uh, in, in E because of technical requirements. Um, and if there's an existing feature in another tier, we have to always bring it to that. But we do our best and we try to prioritize premium. Um, I already discussed geo and disaster recovery. And I think one important thing to mention here is that I think we can do a better job. And I think everyone agrees with that in messaging the value of EEP, right? A list of features is not an enticing offering, right? We want to bring you solutions, not features. Um, and I'm working together with almost everyone. Uh, I think everyone is very opinionated about, about this, but in particular, William Chia and Joe's team uh, to message the value of EEP better. All right. Um, so far about ultimate and premium. And then uh, now a few less leftover things and then there will be time for questions. So these are the questions I always get and I get them pretty much every week. So um, I put links here for you. So how do we prioritize? I answer this and I, every time I answer it, I give a very nice answer, but there's an even better answer. It's in the handbook, product handbook, and it's under prioritization where you would expect it to be. This is one that, came up a number of times over the past months and that uh, Sid suggested to write down, so I did. I wrote down from the top of my head how I think we're gonna use machine learning and things like AI in the future uh, of GitLab as something my engineering heart is, is itching to get on and to start working on, but we have to <laughs> be smart about this. Uh, so I wrote, how can we use machine learning at GitLab and how can we, you know, right the wave of this of this cool new tool. Um, what are the challenges that we have right now at product? Uh, I think it's what I mentioned today, what I spoke about, which is making enterprise edition uh, premium valuable and also introducing EEP. And of course, GitLab uh, is a big challenge for us. We, I believe that the future is SaaS. Uh, I just don't know how soon that future will come and we have to be ready for that. So um, making sure that GitLab.com runs well uh, but it's also pleasurable to use as a, as a user, right? That, that it's easy to sign up. It's easy to scale up and down your organization. Uh, it's easy to move between tiers. Um, that should all be very good. And doing all of that is an art in itself. Uh, and, and, and one that we are over the past months and over the many coming years will continue to have to study and hope to master. And then before I let you ask the question, uh, Jacob usually asks me, what am I most excited about? <laughs> I put it in here uh, for myself and um, right now I am most excited about expanding the breadth of the product. I think that the idea that we have for complete DevOps um, is very powerful. I think, I think the idea of a single tool has always been very enticing and I think we were always convinced about the idea that a single tool makes your the whole experience of developing much better and i think if we can bring that same kind of you know quality that say that that same experience to the offside side of things and basically make that whole thing that the, those disjointed steps you know going from id to then especially the part where you have it in production and then you have to manage your service if we can all bring that into gitlab and make that like a holistic experience i, I think that's very powerful that's what i'm most excited about so I took away that question, um, but there's plenty of time. Let me know if you have any. You can drop them in chat or you can just speak up. Hey, yeah, this is Phil here. Um, wanted to chat about the migration tools. So we're, we're building the, the all-in-one platform to replace a lot of the tools. Uh, from a sales perspective, it can be a very cumbersome conversation to have with, with a prospect. Um, but where is, and we've probably already gone over this, but as far as the migration paths, you know, how are we making it easier? What's the roadmap look like for there? For, for example, if I want to migrate off of Jenkins, you know, having a very easy streamlined migration path, almost like an importer tool. I know we're not there yet, but what's the roadmap for getting a, a solid migration path off of all of these different tools since we're asking to replace all of them for the, for the client? I will give you the most honest answer. Migrating from one tool to another is always going to be hard because not because necessarily we can't build an integration or an importer but because every customer is using these kind of things differently so there's always going to be some struggle there uh, either the customer side on our side now there's a lot we can do and i think 
what we should do here is prioritize what, what gives us the biggest bang for a buck. For instance, we know that as we are expanding into portfolio management, people want to migrate away from Jira, for instance. So we're going to build a Jira importer. That's on our roadmap. We're planning that. And I hope to do that somewhere in the beginning of next year. And that, those kind of things are very doable. Jenkins in particular is a very tricky one. Um, we are looking about it. Like we're looking into how we could possibly do something like that, but it's not arbitrary, uh, especially considering the way the Jenkins users typically use many plugins. And you, you know, there's just not a single translation. It's not like you can directly translate one to the other. So that path is always going to be tricky. And the start really is like education. So maybe the answer is not, you know, I tend to think about from a product perspective, like what kind of technology can we build to solve this problem? But maybe the solution here is education, training, and services rather than, okay, here's a one click button solution. Even though I wish to want to build that, I think that's not always as effective as we can dream it to be. And we also don't want to build a business that just does integrations, right? That is not our business goals. We want to build better tools. So I hope to focus our engineering time as much as we can on that and do big, you know, things that have a, a big impact as much as we can. Thank you. Any other, okay, I see a bunch in the chat. So Joel says, woohoo, Geo and HA without warning labels is huge for a customer. Yes, that is huge. Um, I'm very happy we have a lot of extra people on Geo. Uh, James Ramsey is working on a longer term roadmap for Geo, so we continue to adding value even on top of that. So it won't be, it won't be that we deliver Jira, Geo, Jira, uh, Geo, and then we're done. No, we're gonna do. Geo, we're going to do disaster recovery. We're going to set up an active proxy so that you can push directly to the to the Geo instance rather than to the main one. Um, and we're going to continue iterating on this. Uh, okay. Have we calculated cost of tools we replaced to show an ROI? John May asks, and yes, we have. Mark um, added the link there on the website that you can use to check the ROI, which is really, really good. Mm. Brandon says, part of what made Jenkins horrible also makes it horrible to try and convert with the technology solution. Yeah, I think so. Kim says, trying to create an import for Jenkins would be moot since they have way too many plugins that need to be accounted for. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Tone clarifies, and I think I did, but, uh, by the end of this year, disaster recovery will not be GA. We're only expecting to deliver that next year. Pedro, what are we not going to have in EU that customers would like to have? Uh, lots of things, like basically everything we ship in Enterprise Edition Premium. Um, or do you mean, Pedro, things that we're just not going to do in general? Maybe yeah. it's good to clarify. Yeah, I think it's that. Just uh, are we thinking of EU as the place where we put the features that we are not very fond of, but that customers pay a lot to do them? <laughs> no, we're never going to ship things that we're not very fond of. I think that we should focus on building the tools that our customers need and the tools that we think are the future of, of software development and collaboration and digital collaboration. I think that is the direction we should be going. If the moment we start introducing things we don't like, that means that we're taking on like product debt and, and like we're making our product actually bloated. Like one of the criticisms is of, of a product like the GitLab, where you have a single tool is, well, you have a lot of bloat in your product. Uh, and that's, that's true if we were not opinionated, if we were just to add everything instead of GitLab, but because we take our time to think about like, what are the tools that you actually need and what are actually the useful things, uh, we're only building the kind of things that we really, really think that should be there. And sometimes we're schooled by our customers and they say, well, you we should build this and we thought we didn't need that. Um, but that's a different situation. Uh, we, we are opinionated by the things we build. So EU is definitely not that. EU is the best, experience for GitLab and even in EU will be things that we think are important that we think are critical and that we think will make the lives of our customers of all the individual engineers and managers and executives of companies that use GitLab better. Mm -hmm. 
Brandon says, although interestingly enough, people worry about plugins when converting. I did an analysis that shows the most popular Jenkins plugins are actually built into GitLab. <laughs> and that's very, very great. That should be on our website. I haven't checked that issue, but it should totally be on our website. Um, and also not surprising to be honest. John May, getting away from long-term complexity will make customers go through the process of converting. Um, yeah. We, we, don't, we don't want to add any complexity. That's, that's the thing. All right, three more crickets to ask any questions. And also speak up. Three. So, no, no, you can literally ask me anything and, and no questions. Hey, I you're, it, um, but, oh. I've got a question here. Sorry, Phil, uh, just about gitlab.com. Do we have an update on when, um, uh, authentication into GitLab.com and an SLA will be forthcoming? Uh, no, I have no ETA for you. Um, we're working on it, and I, I believe Mike is working on the exact timeline, but I, I don't know by heart, Aiden. But I, I, I can give you that in the short term. I just don't know it by heart. Okay, no worries. And the other one was just about um, LFS. Uh, I feel like there's a groundswell of interest in using, um, you know, basically get uh, management platforms to manage binaries. Uh, but there seems to be some shortcomings such as purging all files from the system, things of that nature. Do we have any, um, you know, a bit of focus on L uh, sort of enhancing LFS? Yeah, if you check the last few releases, we actually um, delivered a bunch of improvement related to LFS, one of them being the ability to put it in object storage. I I'm a personal believer that there is a big future for LFS in particular when going to the market that Perforce is now leading in, like such as the gaming market, like big media market. Um, so we have somewhat of a vision there. I think I, I need to spend some time to articulate it and your comments and your question uh, did prompt me to do that. So I'm taking a note now and I will, uh, I will articulate a little bit more how, how I think we should be moving. But I, 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 I see the same as you said. Great, yeah, great, thanks. Um, uh, Brandon says, will our move into security market involve a dedicated team? Yes, probably. So yeah, there's a question above, I, and you might have answered it, but I missed it. Um, but it was about how long do we uh, lock the price at 199 for EU? And in case that was an obvious, like there's a huge sales incentive right now. If you're closing any EEP deals, basically just close them in this EU because it's free and then that not only helps them because they get these awesome features, but it helps us get testers of these features, which is what, one of the reasons we want to keep the price down. But how long will that last for? And should we be doing sales promotion around that? Yeah, I, I want yeah, to chime in here. I, I just uh, slack job. Um, that hasn't been decided yet to do it for $200. It's Chad's call. I think what we'll do is we, uh, we're going to stay on our website. Chad said, call us for pricing, but we might introduce it at $400. Um, so still being decided. So um, I, I don't want people watching the, the recording of this to get the impression that, uh, that, that $200 is a, is a thing. We'll decide before the 22nd what exactly we'll do. Thanks, Sid. I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that. The last thing I saw was a document by William, um, which I think listed $200. Yep. I just created the pricing channel so we can uh, better stay uh, abreast of this. All right, cool. Any other questions before we move all to the team call? Three, two, one. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great day, see you at team call.